The following is a CUNY TV special presentation. April 2017, New York's Metropolitan Museum unveiled a rare exhibition of 2,000-year-old treasures from China. Age of the Empires showcases Chinese art from the Qin and Han dynasties, from 221 BC to AD 220. The world-famous terracotta soldiers were discovered in the 1970s in Xi'an, around the first empire's tomb. There are more than 7,000 of them, and each one has his own unique look. The exhibition includes more than 160 objects from China, and most of them have never been displayed in the West. Well, this is a very large show. We call it a landmark exhibition. This exhibition took us five years to complete. It took us quite a number of weeks to install. All these objects come from 32 museums in China, from 13 provinces. The show is about the creation of China as a unified country, with a highly centralized political institution and a diverse culture. The Qin and Han dynasties are among the most important dynasties in Chinese history. Their political systems and cultural ideas have influenced China for over two millennia. Before the Qin dynasty, China was not a unified country. There were quite a few states fighting against each other. The Qin took radical and drastic reforms. And with these reforms, with its powerful army, the Qin was able to defeat all the six rivaling states and began to establish the first centralized empire of China. The Qin dynasty introduced many reforms. Currency, weights and measures were standardized, and a uniform system of writing was established, which allowed people from all parts of the country to communicate with each other, even if they spoke different dialects. Everything that you see in this show is the original, except the two models of these chariots, which were used by the emperor himself. One was for him to travel on the battleground. The other one, it was like a sleeping car. Emperor could sleep in it when emperor was inspecting the entire country. Despite its military strength, the Qin dynasty lasted only 15 years. A few years after the first emperor died in 210 BC, a popular revolt broke out and a new dynasty, Han, was established. The Han period is considered the golden age in Chinese history. It lasted over four centuries. To this day, the majority of Chinese refer to themselves as the Han people, and the Chinese written characters are referred to as Hanzi, Han characters. Like other ancient cultures, Qin and Han people believed in an afterlife. The emperors usually started to build their own tombs as soon as they gained imperial power. Now we're looking at the most well-known piece in the show, and that is a jade suit. The suit is made more than 2,000 pieces of jade and knitted together with gold wires. The Chinese believe that jade has its magic power. It will protect the body from decay. If the body could stay intact, then the soul, the essence of life, will stay forever. They even created some small plugs that would plug into the ears, nose, and all the holes of the body, and that would keep the essence of life from escape. This set of jade was strung together by silk ribbon. It was used as jewelry for men and women. In the Han Dynasty, emperors were afraid of being assassinated, so the emperor would require his officials to wear a big set of jade necklaces, so when they moved, the emperor could hear him. This brick provides wonderful images of a Han period luxury banquet. At the top right are two acrobats. One juggles six balls, and the other wields a sword and balances a bottle on his elbow. A lady dances on the lower right, while a clumsy figure tries to catch her. Two musicians play the flute behind the dancers. At the top left, the host and hostess are enjoying the performance with their food and wine. <music> 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 
Music and wine were important, not only for entertainment, but also for important rituals. And music in ancient China was not used only for entertainment. It was used for important rituals. These were not just ordinary bells that you would hear for music only. They were played in temples. They were played at extremely solemn ceremonies. They would play for especially sacrificial rituals. This wine retriever was unearthed in a Han tomb. A bird rests on a tube connected to a container, which has a hole on its bottom. Just by covering the hole on the bird's back, one could easily retrieve the wine from a large container, then release it to a cup by uncovering the hole on the bird's back. A set of lacquer dinnerware were also unearthed within the same tomb. These plates were for food, and this cup for wine, as the writing on them indicated. And this one shows the depiction of the human body or the human form with all the accuracy. And this was something new that never happened in China before. It leads us to comparing it with Greek sculptures, because that was very much the time when Alexander the Great came to Central Asia. And we have other evidence in this exhibition, a bronze figure, it shows this connection between the Greek sculpture and the Chinese sculpture of the Qin Dynasty. Two small weights are in the shape of a court comedian and a die with 18 faces, one marked drink wine, must have been used for drinking games similar to today. These two animals are two of my favorite pieces. And these were the animals which were most probably based on the live animals raised in the imperial garden. Neither the elephant nor the rhinoceros were native animals from China. They were imported from South Asia. So whatever we say about globalization, it actually happened a thousand years ago. A pair of silk mittens was also unearthed. Many textile fragments found in Han tombs show advanced silk weaving techniques and elegant designs over 2,000 years old. No wonder Chinese silk is so popular around the world. On the back of this Han mirror, two important characters were found. The word Zhongguo, or the word the Central Kingdom, which means China. It illustrates at this time, during the Han Dynasty, people began to identify themselves as Chinese and also identify China as their common homeland.